Hello, everybody. Look who's back today. Welcome to Live with Lee and Haley. And Lee is actually here. Yeah. It is Monday, January 28th. Thanks for being with us. Missed you so much last week. You did? I really did. Okay. I really did. All right. Loved well, I it. missed you then. We, oh. That's what we're going to say. Oh. No, I did. You, you know, even I, you texted know. me that you missed this show and me. That's right. I sure did. Who had your phone? It wasn't true, was it? Some random guy at a bar in Florida, you were like, send this well, text. Well, first of all, you, but you, 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 uh, you didn't you, believe me when I said I was ill. I didn't I not believe Ill. you. I just thought. No, you, I was officially sick. I, and I know what happened, so I, 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 was, uh, it was a, a, I was with friends. And a friend of mine was supposed to stay there who was already in Florida. Come, and he was going to come back later. But he got sick. He got this yeah. thing. Um, Typhoid. Whatever it was. And came back early. I happened to run into him at the airport, and he used my phone. Why did you let him? Well, I don't know. I, I'm a nice guy. Because you love to get sick. I, no, I don't want to get Even sick. Even if he hadn't touched your phone, no, you still would have gotten that's sick not true. in your head. He would have been sick. That was patient zero right there. And then I, I get to Florida. I may have uh, partied a little too much. Woo! And then the next morning, I think, well, this is the effects of being my age and partying too much. Yeah. But then about four or five hours into it, I realized, no, there's something else going on here. And I'm trying to ride rides like a teenager, and I just don't feel well at all. And, mm. I, and I feel feverish. And I left my group and said, I got to go. Yeah. And I walked over to Margaritaville. Jimmy Where, Buffett's yeah, place. Yeah, everyone goes when they're sick. And uh, well, I thought I gotta get some food, some, some. So I go, give me the volcano nachos. <laughs> oh yeah, and I had the volcanic nachos and a beverage. And at some point, I literally had my head on the bar. I've never heard a sadder story. You're I'm, at the bar I'm alone. alone. <laughs> Alone. Alone with his head on the bar, ill with nachos that are supposed to be, feed a family is what you told me, right? Well, Wasn't it like a platter? They're $17 and they're literally piled this high. They're good though. What was your beverage? alka I ate all of them. <laughs> the beverage was, well, oh, it, was it was a margarita. Hey, that's fine. Yeah, I needed the salt. You did. You needed the salt. Mm -hmm. You needed it. Yeah. But I feel much better now. I'm all, I'm 100%. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm really glad. I, it stinks when you get sick, but Especially when on you're vacation. on vacation. It so happens I'm to me really just about sorry. every time. I know. So, uh, I think it's because you, you go so hard all the time. Like, he is the busiest man in television. Lee is never not doing something. And so I think when you're on vacation, your body finally is relaxed a little bit. That's the theory that my friend Peggy Wilson had. Peggy? The exact same. Scott Wilson's wife. That's oh, what she yeah. said. I think that's it. She I think said your body it's, you, you Yeah, you decompress when you're on vacation. Your body finally relents to whatever was attacking yeah. it. Yeah. So we're all we know, you've been sick for years. So uh, on the show today, a yeah. couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, Speaking of sickness. Oh, yeah. We're going to get the other side of the story. That's right. As you know, it is flu season here in Kentucky, and we always gripe about it. Everyone does. Everyone gets the flu all the time. How does the flu feel about it, though? Isn't this whataboutism, though? What anyway, uh, also on the show, uh, our good friend Kenny Rice has a new endeavor. I know. So we're going to learn about that. Yes. Because it's something that you can watch, especially if you're a fan of the horse racing. Thank God. Because his career, I feel like he's needed That's a little right. boost he does. to get yeah. his career going. Yeah, he needs some help. He's, he's just been on the fringe. I'm glad he's getting a break. <laughs> yeah. Finally. He's been at that little network, NBC. Yeah. No, so, um, yeah, Kenny Rice is going to be with us today. And then um, we are going to be making some cocktails. Okay. It's going to be good. It's going to be Sounds really like good. like a good show. Yes. That's all we do on this place, make cocktails. I know. I know. What is that about? Because we're in Kentucky, and if you don't like it, then... Mm. Hey, uh, <laughs> let's do this first. We're going to give a shout-out yeah. to the 8th Horse Bakery right here in Lexington yeah. because they dropped off some of their baked goods this morning, which are gluten-free. Mm -hmm. They got donuts, they got the pies, they got the cookies, they got breads. And uh, here Thank they are you, right here. Here's an example of that. Ooh. We're going to go visit these guys soon, by the way. So, uh, oh, there we go. What should I, want, I taste? You I want, want that? I want to taste I want this. To, you try that. I'm going to try the cookie. It's like a sugar cookie. All gluten free. All right. By the way, did you watch the game? Did I? Yes, yeah. I did. The Kentucky Kansas matchup. While I wasn't here, so uh, LEX 18 employee Bill Wilcox, yeah. I saw he wore his Kansas shirt in here, which is so irritating. You know, I'm mm. not a big Kansas fan, but I really don't like him because mm. of Bill, because he runs his mouth constantly, mm -hmm. never shuts up. He's annoying as all get out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make him put on a UK sweatshirt, right? Where's that? Do we have a UK sweatshirt? We're supposed to do something for Bill, right? He's got to wear that now, right? Where is Bill? Well, this is a bust. 
Oh, that's oh, where Bill is? Oh, that's Bill now. Oh, no. he, he got and let that, go. That right there epitomizes Bill Wilcox and the Kansas Jayhawks, a bunch of no-shows. Just like when they tried to win the national championship and we thwarted them, thanks to Anthony Davis. Uh, uh, uh. Well, what a good game, though. A it was game. a great game. This is good, by the way. Yeah, I don't know what this Gluten is. Gluten-free. This is good. The icing on this is so good. Uh, well, cupcake, but whatever this cookie is, I'm feeling it in a big way. All right, you ready to do the hot topics? Let's go. Roll it! Hot topics. Wow, that is so good. This is an interesting story here because the British newspaper, The Telegraph, issued a three-paragraph apology on Saturday to First Lady, First Lady, First Lady, First Lady Melania Trump retracted several claims that were published two weeks ago in the paper's magazine titled The Mystery of Melania. Reported the First Lady was struggling in her modeling career before she met President Donald Trump. She said her career so advanced only after his assistance. The story also reported Melania's father was a fearsome presence who controlled the family. In the apology, the Telegraph wrote they accepted that Mrs. Trump was a successful professional model in her own right before she met her husband. If you read this apology, it is one big mea culpa. Mm. It is a very in-depth apology. Really? Of certain, uh, oh, it is a humbling apology that they make, which obviously was forced by Melania's attorneys. Mm -hmm. So in Britain, they don't have quite the First Amendment rights we do. Right. So if you libel or slander somebody, you can get a payday. Yeah. Because they've had precedent set over there, especially from celebrities. Mm -hmm. And they took action and it was kind of fun to watch them really, I guarantee there was a settlement in there as well. They yeah. don't mention that, but this thing was extensive and it went point by point as to what we got wrong and we are so sorry for this. Well, good. Don't be talking yeah. about our first lady. But I, She's I, off limits. I think every first lady is off limits, unless they do something be. crazy. It should be, but I mean, if you're getting things completely wrong. Yeah, plus anybody. It, you can't report lies. Nail them on it. You can't. You just can't do it. And, I, and you may see that uh, coming soon from some kids up in northern Kentucky. Because uh, they weren't celebrities. And right. so uh, in, in America, we, we kind of give media carte blanche when it comes to political figures and celebrities. You can right. kind of say things about them that maybe may not be untrue. It has yeah. to, really be specific mm -hmm. but those kids mm, so they may get a payday let me just say it's a good thing Lee was off last week because he probably would have been fired I, I'm still angry about let's it. not let's oh, not okay let's not, let's not. Right. Yeah. I want to, you to stay on the show oh. big friend of the show Lee Cruz yeah. all right Zac Efron's new movie about serial serial killer Ted Bundy is not sitting well with people and the reactions are going viral this is the trailer that just came out last week Efron plays Ted Bundy the notorious serial killer in extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile the film is based on Bundy's life and his relationship with his then wife, Carol Ann Boone. In the trailer, Efron portrays Bundy as charismatic and charming. Bundy was actually famous for those traits. Twitter users are outraged over the trailer, though, saying it romanticizes Bundy. Uh, some of the action that, reaction, though, was towards the music. Comments like the music made the trailer seem like a fun, lighthearted action movie. Here's a clip. Ladies and gentlemen, I am that innocent suspect. You are skating on thin ice, partner. The media has convicted Ted before he's had his day in court. I'm gagged, and you're not. I wonder whether he did it or not. Okay. I, I mean, I see what people are saying. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, what he did was horrific and terrible. He killed so many women. Yeah, are, you, are you gonna throw a butt in there? No, but I'm gonna say, but this is a movie. This isn't a documentary. No, I, I, no, I know, like I know, I, and they have stylists. I, I'm just, if They're you, just taking it up right. a notch. Yes, people, women, but if you, I mean, obviously, if you read anything about that time, women were fawning over him, going so to the trial, just hoping he'd look at them. Like, he had that effect on people. And so, yeah. I don't, you know, Do yeah, maybe it, the movie has it cranked up a little bit, but it's not that far from the truth. The final word on Ted Bundy is in a book written by my dear late friend Tim Wilson. Go read that. If, if you can find a copy. What's he, it called? I forgot. Oh, but, wow. But close. that's not important. You guys I, are close. I don't need to know because I heard about it. Every time we were on the road, he would go in depth about, you know what it's like to have this knowledge and nobody well, how did knows he anything. Know about it? He did the research. So when he, you know, he, he, he would work at night, then he would go to a library and pull up the newspaper articles and, and what he had found, and I believed him, 
he had found that Georgia, the state of Georgia, wrongfully convicted a black man mm -hmm. for a crime that he knows Ted Bundy did, mm. and they executed him. And he was a special needs uh, person. And they had a very low IQ, and they got him, but it was the same M.O. Mm. As, uh, as Ted Bundy did. Yeah. And, and, and the reason Tim knows that, because uh, they convicted Ted on a crime in Gainesville, Florida, which was close to wherever the line right. across from Georgia was, and he had plenty of time to get there and do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and his his crimes were just so expansive. He admitted to killing some 30, but, yes, he but was police are saying he guy. killed, right. he could have, I'm saying. He, he didn't look like a, yeah. Can I talk for a second? Uh, we, we heard you all week. Okay. A police officer in uh, Somerville, South Carolina, had a time to try to corral a lost sheep. The moment was caught on his dash camera and is catching headlines online. The video shows the officer slowly leading the sheep along a fence to greener pastures. As he waits for animal control, the officer talks to the sheep. The officer can be heard say, I don't know what you want to eat, man. Here's a clip. Come on, come on, come on. I'm taking you to greener pastures. I don't know what you want to eat, man. You nervous eater? Well, look at this clover right here. Clover is a very calming thing. Have you ever had clover honey? Clover tea? Can I, I say, this it. is the way I talk to animals too. I have a full on conversation. You've seen me do it with dogs. Yeah, yeah. My sister, one time she was at her friend's house and they heard, um, it was like their house sitter. She was like at a friend's house, but the friend's parents were gone, so they had a house sitter too. They didn't trust their son to watch the home. And they heard the house sitter and they're talking to the cat go, do you need to go out? <laughs> well, do, do you? you? <laughs> and they were like, does she think the animal's gonna go? Uh, yes, they do, and uh, I need to go number two. <laughs> uh, All right, those are today's hot topics.